Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So today we have to talk about Charles Barkley and Gilbert Arenas and their think pieces that they provided here recently. Now Gilbert went at Charles for comments he made about Kevin Durant during NBA All-Star Weekend, which was ironically on air with Draymond Green. Now, a few years ago, Draymond Green would have been at Barkley's neck for saying anything about KD when he was with the Warriors or maybe shortly after he left, but with the recent unfolding of events with Nurkic and Draymond Green and Kevin Durant and what Draymond has said recently on his podcast calling uh, you know, Nurkic and Durant lames, then you know he, he really didn't have any pushback. Now, Gilbert Arenas posed a question and asked Charles Barkley what has he ever led because Barkley is always saying KD isn't a bus driver And, you know, one of the very first uh, series I paid attention to completely, like, sat down and watched every game was in 1992 uh, when they played the – when the Bulls played the Phoenix Suns. And I watched – you know, I watched the games throughout the season before then, but I really watched it and paid attention to it, you know. And Barkley was playing at a very high level. You know, we all know how it ended in Philadelphia when he was there. But uh, he came to that team, and he was the best player. He was one of the leaders. You had Dan Marley. Kevin Johnson was a big-time guard, one of the guards that get lost in discussion. But if Kevin Johnson was playing right now, people would be looking at him like one of the greatest things since sliced bread. We're going to take a listen to what Chuck said about KD as far as his leadership. And as far as him being the guy for a team, we're going to take a look at Gilbert Arenas' rebuttal as well. Let's peep it. He wanted to be KD, but he's not doing it. To me, it's got to be Booker. He's got to be your, your mental leader and your vocal leader to a certain degree. No disrespect to Kevin. Kevin's a follower. He's not a leader. He's proven that on all his stops. Booker's a hell of a player also. I think he's going to have to take the initiative and take this on team to the next level because... Man, Kevin's a hell of a player. I ain't never going to say anything bad about him, but I say the same thing with Boston. One of you guys has to step forward. He has to step forward. And for me, for Phoenix to be successful, it has to be Booker. Then, see, we all know about the Houston, right? We know about him. I was at the end. Yeah, yeah, because he didn't get a ring in Phoenix when he was chasing the ring in Phoenix. Then he went to Houston Rockets, trying to join that team to try to beat... Michael Jordan and the reason they failed because he was overweight and out of shape, right? The reason that uh, Houston didn't win, not because they was, because the guy that they brought in knew was not in shape, was blaming everybody else for not working hard and being in shape while your big ass was over there on the bike complaining about everybody else. Oh, I heard all the stories I asked. So when you call somebody a, a follower and not a leader, let us know which team that you led or was a leading right being the best player on the suns you didn't lead that team already had captains and it was already established before you got there right you bailed out on you know philadelphia and you wanted to try to win a ring so whatever you have this grudge with you know someone like kevin durant you need to look back at yourself and look at back at your fucking career because you followed Back then, you was not a man on your own. Yeah, you had the personality, but there's nothing in your resume that had you as someone who was leading something. You always tried to run to go chase something. Now, I absolutely need to see y'all takes in the comments section, whether it differ from mine or not, because I want to get all the input I can on this topic. For me, specifically, again, Barkley joined the Warriors when it was over for him, pretty much. I mean, he was still playing solid, but he wasn't the Charles of old. And anybody in their right mind knows Hakeem Olajuwon was always going to be the leader of that team. So Barkley wasn't going to come in and be the leader of the team. One of, maybe. But even, you know, they had already had a championship pedigree. And Barkley wouldn't have been looked at like getting a ring on his own no more. You know what I'm saying? Not at that point. It had been looked that kind of like a Peyton Miami ring or, you know, one of those rings you get later, Jason Kidd in Dallas ring, Hall of Fame player, but didn't lead as the Hall of Fame guy to get there. 
Now, if you look at their resumes, you know, as far as what Gilbert's saying, both of them in their heyday took a team to the finals as the best player. KD took them back when they faced Miami, and they lost that series 4-1. to one. Barkley obviously lost to Jordan and the Bulls, you know, in, in, in the finals back in 1992. Um, Barkley led the dream team, you know what I'm saying, scoring back in 92. So, I mean, Barkley was that guy. Jordan stopped a lot of Hall of Fame players. I know a lot of people like to say the 73 and 9 Warriors were better than you know, the teams that Jordan and, and uh, Barkley and them faced, no, they wasn't, man. No, they were not. You know, the rules have changed so much. They were a great offensive team. And with offense being highlighted, yes, they thrive in this era. Um, could they have lost to a lot of those Western Conference teams in the series back in the day? Absolutely. They could have lost to a lot of those teams. Can you imagine... I ain't even going to get into it because that's going to start a whole different argument. You know what I'm saying? I just want to stick to what Gilbert said. Now, Barkley, I'm not saying that he didn't even hear stories from within the locker room. Maybe Barkley is overstating some of his leadership qualities. Two things can be true, right? But as far as what have you ever led in your career, I mean, I think Barkley's resume kind of speaks for himself. You know, anybody that got to the finals, you have to look at it, man. The Dream won those titles when Michael Jordan was out. Now, Penny and Shaq eliminated Jordan, but people like to leave out some of that story. Jordan came back in, like, March, you know, mid-March, and the playoffs started in April. So he was nowhere near who he should be. Yeah, he had, like, a 50-something point game or something like that, but he wasn't consistent. He wasn't Michael Jordan yet and you saw what happened that next year they went out there and they got the ship so um you know people like to talk about that time when penny and orlando magic who were formidable uh ended mike and them but mike came back in march just for some context you know from baseball um so jordan stopped everybody man now what i had loved to see hakeem olajuwon and clyde drexler play against Michael Jordan, absolutely, you know, because I think that would have been a challenge that they hadn't faced or nor did they face uh, in in that time frame. Now, Carl Malone was formidable. People like to say, uh, I, I said something the other day saying, you know, who would you take? I think it was Shannon Sharp and them saying, who would you take or who's better, Carl Malone or KD? And I like how, how many people just said KD and thought, they were right. You know what I'm saying? Carl Malone, which I only like to talk about him based off some things he did in his personal life. You know, I put him with Kells. I, I just don't like to talk about them guys at all. Uh, but, you know, as a player, you, you know, he obviously he can't shoot threes and be on the perimeter like KD, but he he was a problem. He hit, I remember that dude hit almost every fadeaway Jay he took. He was annoying playing against the Bulls. He was strong as an ox. He was very athletic, you know, when he came out of Louisiana Tech. He's like the perfect power for it, man. So I, I'm not so sure, you know, people just uh, saying that KD is that much more of a formidable opponent than Carl Malone. I'm not going to ride with that, but, uh, you know, but I get it. You know, people know what they see today. And if you look at highlights, it would look like that. You know what I'm saying? But, um, again, man, Jordan stopped, Carl Malone stopped, uh, uh, Reggie Miller, Reggie Miller, some of those teams that he was on probably would have got one. And you can't say Reggie Miller wasn't a leader. Now, he was absolutely a leader. They just could not get over the Bulls, you know. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. You can't say Gary Payton wasn't a leader, you know. So, it's a lot of people that were good leaders they couldn't beat Michael Jordan, you know. So that's what I would say. Now, LeBron's in a different era. I'm not even trying to diminish uh, LeBron by saying he didn't stop certain Hall of Famers because I understand the way the contracts work now. People can move around more. You got more moving parts. People can team up. Now, he was one of the catalysts for teaming up in your prime. Don't forget, I said in your prime. So don't bring up the Boston Celtics. They were outside of their prime when they teamed up. In their 30s, I'm talking about in your mid-20s, in your prime. You know, that that's the teaming up I have a problem with. I didn't even have a problem 
with KD trying to team up with Kyrie Irving and James Harden, that was not an issue for me. The issue was him teaming up with Steph, uh, Draymond, and Clay in his prime in his mid twenties, and his like. There's this misconception out there that him leaving Russell Westbrook was the problem. Me personally, I never had a problem with him leaving Russell Westbrook per se. It was just one team. Why well, I say two? Because I did not want him playing with LeBron, and I didn't want him going to join Steph and those guys. But other than that, KD was free to go anywhere else in the NBA he wanted to. Anywhere else. And imagine if, like, KD and a young Jokic was playing together and Jokic became who he was. It wouldn't be frowned upon because he wasn't already that guy yet. You know, you could have played with a lot of people who wasn't that guy yet that would be that guy now. (laughs) You know, so I look at that and I say... You know, KD just chose the wrong team, man. Um, His leadership will always be called into question. Barkley didn't necessarily get on a team where it was stacking a deck. Because you got to look. You know, the the ages of the players, a lot of them went out of their prime earlier because of, one, they played with more injuries back in the day uh, or played through more injuries. They competed a lot harder, especially All-Star Weekend, which is a whole nother conversation. Um, And... Thing, I remember once upon a time, uh, an ACL injury was almost like the end of your career, you know, like, or Achilles, you wasn't coming back from that stuff once upon a time. Yeah, that was it for you. So medicine has come a long way too, and it's a good thing for the game, but I'm just saying it's a dynamic that you have to take in consideration. So when Barkley joined... What was he like, 33 when he went to Houston? His 33 ain't like somebody else's 33 today, you know. That's that's what I want to say. Like, it, all 33s ain't made the same, especially. And, and even before then, right, if you go back, man, you remember David Thompson got injured. His career was over. He, he did, like, the same offensive output as Michael Jordan his rookie year. He was scoring, like, on that level. Then he had a, a a devastating injury, man, and, you know, he kind of went down from there. He played pretty good for a little bit, but they just didn't have the things to get your body back to that level back in those days. So I know I went off on a whole different tangent. I just want to provide some different insights on why the game is different, uh, why Chuck is saying what he's saying, and why leadership uh, shouldn't be – called into question for Chuck you know again I ain't saying that Gilbert Arenas hasn't heard stories about Charles Barkley's leadership but you know to question him as a leader as far as leading the Suns uh and only being stopped by Michael Jordan like so many other ones like Patrick Ewing was I mean I don't know, man. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Peace.